Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to call this meeting to order. This meeting, which a lot of people are asking, it is a, uh, a meeting of the Licensing, Inspection, Health, Human Service, Technology Committee, which uh, we affectionately, I'll still say for the record, we affectionately refer to as the Walmart Committee. It covers just about everything. Um, and normally in these committee meetings, um, we'll take people who have uh, particular items that are going to go on the uh, council agenda for the following meeting, and they'll come in and, and represent that particular item, you know, whether it's a, a sale agreement or a license agreement. Um, this meeting is a little different. Uh, we're trying to be proactive on a very important issue, and the issue is that of short-term rentals in residential neighborhoods. And allow the public to come, as you have tonight, learn more and hopefully share about um, your own experiences and ideas about how this should be treated uh, in the city um, prior to any type of ordinance or resolution that we might consider at a meeting. Um, so that, that's the general purpose of tonight. Uh, the, the format for the meeting um, is that we don't have a sign-in sheet similar to council. Uh, but just our committee meeting procedure is uh, anybody that speaks or addresses a committee meeting uh, has to give their name for the record. So we're going to ask you what your name is. Um, everyone will have up to three minutes to state whatever you'd like, as long as it's respectful. And if it's not, we have a few of our finest in the back to assist with keeping order. Uh, but uh, that, that aside, um, it's, we're, we're looking primarily for people's experiences um, with this practice. Um, it's not fair to uh, single out whether it's a particular realtor or a particular online service, um, but the, the growth of these type of short-term rentals um, has occurred in our community. Uh, we have a lot of these um, technological innovations that have made things like booking a vacation to Atlantic City much more convenient than it was in the past. Um, it's opened up other markets to people that may not normally come to Atlantic City. So in other words, it's created a lot of opportunities that a lot of you hopefully will share with us your own experiences, whether you're an owner, uh, somebody who's done this practice, or maybe you're a neighbor of an existing place. It's also caused a couple issues in the community, um, and things that both myself, uh, my colleague, um, other people on council, we've, we've been receiving a, a growing number of um, concerns, calls and emails about um, certain things happening in uh, rental properties in, in isolated occasions. And so uh, with all that as backdrop, uh, we have a big history in the city of people renting out their homes, you know, whether it be um, years ago when people would move from the main portion to the ground floor to help offset their income, um, and, and other things along those lines that have helped them out. Um, and so as background, that, that's going to be um, Kind of context, and I'll, I'll, I'll defer. Um, Councilman Shabazz, do you have anything you'd like to share with us tonight? Uh, very, just very briefly, Mr. Mayor, Chairman. Uh, uh, it's good to see so many people uh, here, and I know this is a subject that uh, many people feel very intensely about. I would only ask that uh, when people make their comments, as you said, uh, within the time frame, that they just restrict their comments to this topic. I know that people have a lot of other concerns about the city, and we want to entertain them, but at this hearing, uh, this meeting, we only want to hear uh, comments related to this particular topic. And I would only say that I'm just uh, glad to uh, hear everybody's input. And, uh, thank you for your leadership in calling uh, people together so that we can hear from them and devise uh, legislation based on what people need and what people are, the concerns they articulate tonight. <clears throat> and I also want to acknowledge um, Triax. Um, who's a great local partner. Uh, they've agreed to come out here and take video, so it'll be offered online for people who may have had to work or uh, be out of town at this time and not join us, so they could um, get a primer, if you will, with the experiences you're going to share and, and our discussion tonight, uh, which will hopefully, edu hopefully educate more people in the community um, to help us in, in, in dealing with this. Uh, if we could go around, so I introduce myself, Councilman Jesse Kurtz, uh, my colleague, Councilman Kaleem Shabazz. If you have the members of the administration introduce themselves. My name is Dale Finch. I'm director of licensing and inspections and health and human services. Perhaps it's called the Walmart program. So we have so many things we're involved in. But that's my name, Dale Finch. I'm Ivy Leninger from the uh, city solicitor's office, and I'm also um, sorry, also a member of the licensing uh, committee. Uh, my name is Ben Kaufman, and I'm also with the city solicitor's office. Great, and I'm representing from the city clerk's office. We have our uh, city clerk, Paula Gilletti, and our deputy city clerk, Mark Gillette. 
Great. Um, and what we'll do in terms of uh, inviting the public, and you have up to three minutes to share, we'll just um, we'll do this orderly. We'll start on this side of the room, um, so my left to your right, and we'll start with the first row. Whoever would like to speak, we'll go from the aisle to the edge. You don't have to speak if you don't want to, but we'll just we'll work our way through the building, um, and then and, that, and that's how we'll do it. So we'll start oops, starting with the first row. Me. If, if you'd so like. Jesse, I would like to wait until everybody speaks, and then maybe I'll speak on behalf of the Chelsea Neighborhood Association. Okay, we'll do a last call. The only rule will be you can only speak once, up to uh, three minutes. And uh, one more point to piggyback on the civility point. Um, the more successful this is, uh, the more frequently we'll be able to do it on other issues of concern. And that's really my vision. I'd like to involve the public more, especially with the state presence as it is in town right now. I'd like to have your voice heard uh, more frequently in a more formal matter. So uh, anybody else from the first row like to join us? And uh, if you do, you just come stand stand up here at the, and we'll hand you the microphone. So come on up. Okay. This way? Got it. <coughs> My name's Terry Kelp. Is this on? No, no, no. You got it. Hold on. Just the button. No, that's on. There we go. It's Terry Kelly, um, the little Tallahassee Avenue. You've got to put your hand on it. Welcome. No, how you know? It's not on. It's not on. It's on. It's on. It's on. Testing, we good? Yeah, it's not on. It's not coming through. Monica, you don't get it. Oh, it is going in now. Okay, you just hold it and speak loudly. <laughs> it's not even here. How's that? Can you hear me? Okay, I've been a resident um, in the uh, Chelsea neighborhood, uh, down Hassey Avenue, for about 15 years. And um, over the course of the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of one, two night rentals go out, you know, short term rentals, the long term rentals of a month or so. Nobody minds, so they're, they're very respectful and and so forth. And I, th I thought that was the uh, the law to be, uh, you know, thirty day rental. But as I understand it, lately it's been this, this um, um, Airbnb and so forth, without mentioning any names, um, is coming into play. You know, one two night. One of the problems we encounter uh, that I see potentially and realistically, I'll give you one example that my wife ran into in talking to a neighbor of a Airbnb rental. I'll give you this uh, example now, that um, somebody came home at two, three in the morning, didn't, forgot where they lived, where they rented, and they were banging on doors, waking people up, do I live here? Obviously had a few adult beverages, but uh, they were waking people up. I know from my own experience, I have there. There's been a rental, uh, two doors down, and people come in late, two, three in the morning, and start talking loudly outside, and continuing mm -hmm. the party, so to speak, like there's nobody else around. So it, it wakes the neighborhood up. It disrupts the neighborhood. Yeah. They have no respect for the neighborhood. Right. right. Okay. Right. Let's compound that a little bit more and say, hey, they ding a car back and out. You think they're going to report it if they're if they're one or two days stay? No, I don't think so. They're going to leave town, right? As opposed to a your neighbor backs into you, and uh, they're going to say, hey, I backed into you accidentally. Mm -hmm. The short-term rentals aren't going to do that, so, you know. And uh, let's say the third thing, trash. They throw trash <laughs> out. They're leaving. They don't care. Oh, it's a mess. It's a mess. It is a mess. And it can be. It has a potential for being a mess because they're there for a couple of days on the weekend and then they go home and they leave the mess there. And so I'm against it. I don't like it. Keep them out of Atlantic City. Keep those people out of Atlantic City. And what we'll, we'll do is, uh, I'll, I'll say this further. You'll be in a few moments, man. I'll say this further. Are these, are these homes that are, that, are, uh, uh, that are for profit, are they inspected? Are they properly, uh, uh, are, uh, you know, are they properly uh, cared for safety-wise? Yes. I don't know. Do they have to be inspected? Yes. Like a long-term rental, like, like a commercial business. Uh, and, uh, who's who's monitoring this? Who's monitoring this? Do they have to be What if they get caught? What if they get caught renting and they're not supposed to? I don't know. What are the consequences? But we're left as owners year-round with the consequences of all this. And so, I'm opposed to it. Cool. No, thank you very much. Uh, you set the mic down there on the podium. Um, 
And what we'll do is um, the questions are posed at the end of it. We'll see what we can answer. Uh, and then also we'll identify things that, you know, there are some real issues that we need to consider, um, such as, like, you know, is it a change of law versus um, enforcement of existing laws, you know, would be the one thing and the item of trash. I guess for starters, are they inspected, uh, inspected Director Finch? Yes, uh, every rental is inspected. Uh, if there's a seasonal rental, they're inspected each season. Uh, and we go out and we, you know, make sure they comply with the code. The seasonal rental fee is $300 per season. Uh, and it, we, we have found in the past couple of weeks about eight or ten that were not registered mm -hmm. and they received summonses, they'll be in court. So we're on top of that and we need your help, your input to tell us if you, you know, where you see these, these, uh, see these short term rentals, that we check our list to see if they are registered, inspected and so forth. So uh, we, you know, we really have so many inspectors, we need additional eyes and ears to give us information. But they do comply. Uh, if they would not pass uh, the code, they would not be permitted to rent legally. So we, we're starting to be very aggressive. We we'll had inspectors in the last couple of weekends, just riding through certain areas of town where we think they are, and that's how we call it. So. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody else from the front row? And if you could uh, grab the mic, it's on the podium, and then we'll start your time. I um, mean, say your name at first for the record. I also live at 113 North Tallahassee Avenue with my husband, Terry. Oh. And um, it just occurs to me that you're asking for input. All you got to do is go online to Airbnb and, and HomeAway, and you'll see everybody who's doing this. So I, I think we, we the city can be proactive job. about finding out which properties are doing these short-term rentals. Thank you very much. Uh, it should be mentioned that um, some great people from the public, some of whom are in this room um, through you know, voicing concern, etc., were encouraged to take note if there's a place like this in your neighborhood. Um, feel free to call in to the department, you know, let them know, um, or email it in, because um, it is, you know, it's our community and that's a great way to, to pitch in. So fantastic. Anybody else in the front row? Would you like to go now? No, I just want well, to. Well, we're gonna we're gonna keep just. There's so many people. No, I just wanted to ask a question. Though. Well, if you want to come on up and, and give your name and ask the question, go for it. All right, Carol Rafi, Chelsea Neighborhood Association. Welcome. The question is, what is the law? Yeah. People don't seem to know what the law is. So all these people can come up and speak, but I think to start off that you should define what the law is. What's a seasonal rental? Is that renting renting? monthly for the whole season or every other day. So where's the law? And if it's $300, do they have to pay $300 every time they turn over nope. the unit? So it's seasonal. Just let the people know what that law is that we're talking about right now. Fantastic. We have Directed. three seasons. We, we changed the ordinance about a year and a half ago. So we combined the winter and the spring to one season. We have summer and then we have the fall. So each each season, they're required to register and pay three hundred dollars. Not on the change of resident or with a tenant, because it could be a weekly rental or whatever. So it's based upon those three seasons. Is it weekly or monthly or daily? Well, and actually, in part, you have to. Um, it could be. It could be a weekly rental. It could be a monthly rental. I, so we'll get to you third row. We just we have to. There's so many people. Great turnout. Thanks again. But we're going to keep in order for this one. Anybody from the solicitor's office want to chime in? Okay. Anybody else from the front row? All right, we'll go back to the second row on this side. Anybody? Oh, if we're going to start on this side of the room, my left, your right. We're going to start on the first row. We're going to go to the back, and then we're going to do it up this way. We'll give everybody an opportunity. Second row. All right, uh, tomorrow, we'll come up. Tomorrow, I live at 113 North Aberdeen. I want to know, like she said, what is the law? If this is a single family home, how could you allow people to rent your home? <coughs> this is a neighborhood. We're all homeowners. We don't run out. And the city isn't making money except for the fees. <coughs> the homeowners are making money that bought the houses, don't live there, and ran out. My street was real nice. Now it's five and six and seven cars. 2.30 in the morning, my son had a holler over. 
that they were making noise. What is the law? Who passed this law? Maria Haas said it's been on the books for years. It has. Well, if that's your question, you set the mic down, and we'll, we'll go ahead and answer the director. Well, it's seasonal rental. That's that's part of the city code. It's been there for forever. Uh, seasonal uh, means Memorial Day to Labor Day. Right. One, one ten. Yeah, and actually, guys, we'll just have to look to keep the back and forth to a minimum, just again for time. And we we we're um, we're welcome to follow up. We'll make ourselves available after the meeting. You can email concerns. We'll schedule another meeting, but just we have to keep it in, in order. Thank you very much for your. If you're a Last question. And it's a residential area. How could you allow people to run out to make money? That's all I'm asking. We're all homeowners. How could you make them rent out? That's all. I don't know what kind of laws you can make it, but the taxes keep going up. Okay. Anybody else from the second row? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I'll go last. Now I know why I don't go to council meetings. There's too many interruptions. You all just shut up until it's your turn. All right? I mean, don't, don't get the Marine drill instructor and be gone. Excuse me, sir. But I mean, I know you can't talk that way, but I can. Jeez, you all get your turn. Don't interrupt anybody, whether you like them or you don't. That's all I'm saying right now. now this is a letter I'm going to read from a neighbor of mine. I'm Tom Lemay, by the way, 439 North New Hampshire Avenue. Born and raised four generations, Atlantic City. Anybody got more street cred than that? Okay. Now, this neighbor of mine is affected by the elements of short term or long term. We're not talking long term or short term here. This is something that affects whether they're long term rentals or short term. This comes from uh, Bruce Ward of uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, in the inlet section. Please accept this letter to uh, put on your record for your meeting. I'm out of town and cannot make it because of prior commitment. As you know, I have contacted your office previously with regard to this matter. The practice of short-term rentals be emerged properly as a result of capability of internet transactions, which has been mentioned before. When overnight stay is contrasted between hotel and residential rentals, the disproportionate effect upon the city and residents can be illustrated. For instance, Hotel, on staff supervision. Rental, no facility supervision. Hotel, corporate registration and tax recovery. Rental, private, unregulated, unlicensed owners engaged in commerce, no revenue, money for the city, with the exception that the director mentioned. <coughs> facility manager per code enforcement. Properties inspected once under seasonal provision and then turned over frequently. Again, long term or short term, these are elements. At any, as in any issue, there are always two sides. Properties owned and rented by persons who live in Atlantic City are generally managed better by those who are non-residents. There are some people who have never spent one night in the property they own. From the very beginning, they were in it to buy it and rent it. Some of the negative aspects I have personally witnessed include, this is Bruce Ward speaking, rentals to 25 or more people in a three bedroom property. Noise at all hours of the night. It gets better. Foul language within earshot of children. Illegal drug use. Alcohol com consumption by minors. Tour buses with prostitutes. Persons urinating in the yard. Renters having no clue or instruction as to how to trash and or recycle. Now other New Jersey short towns have begun to address this issue, whereas two central public concerns, regulation and tax recovery, dominate. Indeed, a private citizen cannot open a flea market in Atlantic City, for instance, without proper application and payment of the fee. The city's continual allowance of overnight rentals without proper regulation, underlying proper regulation, Inspection and payment of fees for deficiency suffered by residents. Moreover, the future risk of someone's teenage child who ends up seriously injured, found dead, on, or anything else that happens will be the city's responsibility, and the city taxpayers will have to pay the fine. Very truly yours, G. Bruce Ward, Atlantic City, New Jersey. And I emphasize once again, this is not regarding short rentals 
long-term rentals. These are incidents that happen and are not regulated, enforced, one way or the other. Thank you very much. And the neighbors have every right to complain. It's like, thank you, Mr. Ward slash Mr. LeMay. We really appreciate that. Um, someone else, a uh, gentleman in the green shirt. Hello. Yeah, I'm Chris Cochran. Live at 414 North Main Avenue for 10 years now. Welcome. Thank you. Um, in the past four to five years, when I first moved into the neighborhood, it was mostly empty houses that were for sale, or there was one rental that was frequently weekend rentals, sometimes week rentals. In the past four or five years, and I know a lot of it's because the taxes have gone up so high, people have been forced to move out and rent the houses. But I, I had a house in Beach Haven for 15 years before I moved here to Atlantic City. All the rentals there are Saturday to Saturday. And you get families that way. The house next door to me, it's a, I mean, they're big houses over there, five bedroom houses, but I've seen 50 and 60 people in there. Mm -hmm. They come home from the bar at 3 o'clock in these buses or limos, you get out, and they're, they're speaking like it was 12 noon and wake us up. I mean, you know, and I get up at 3 30 to commute to Philadelphia for work every day. And frequently this happens. Mm -hmm. There have been many one and two night rents. That's just wrong. I mean, if you're staying for a night or two, you should be staying at the casino or one of the hotels in town. So, I mean, I, I, I think the, no rentals should be Saturday to Saturday, no less than a week. No rentals. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, madam in the red shirt. I think if you rent for a week, you get families. If you rent for a night, you get bachelor parties. My name is Maria Haas. I think you can hear me. Um, the law regarding those seasonal rentals. It's unenforceable. There's no clear line and there's nothing you can do about it. The $300 that the city gets doesn't even pay for the trash removal from those places. Forget about the traffic and the, and, and, and the parking and, and the people you don't even know. We have a nice neighborhood. Everybody knew everybody until this. A few months ago it started. It's unbelievable. Just unbelievable. But I'm telling you that that law is almost unenforceable because it's very undefined and it's unclear. I've known about the law for a long time. It's never been enforced. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Yeah, I think that takes up. Um, and if anybody from um, the dais wants to jump in and respond, feel free. But we're, otherwise, we're going to go to the third row. Anybody from the third row like to speak? Come on. Well, I can speak from here. Okay. I'm, I guess one of my questions is, first you of all... Give your name for the record. I'm part. sorry. Libby Wills. I live in Thank the you. inlet on Madison Avenue. Uh, do you have people working on the weekends when these things occur? Because we, we have one house in our neighborhood. The guys come in, they park 30, almost 30 cars on the, on the lot. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they're making all kinds of noise. Unfortunately for me, it doesn't hurt me, but I asked the neighbor who lives, who lives whose property abuts that property, and the kids, the young men that come in that drink, they had give some serious problems. I can remember when that house was first rented, they were popping fry crackers at 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning. So those are the kinds of issues we have. But, Dale, my question to you is, do you have people working on the weekend so we can call and let them come out and see what's going on on the weekends? Because yeah, that's had, when this happens. Had inspectors last couple of weekends as, it's, as it gets into the season, and we'll get a, a number that will post that you can call as a hotline and get that set up this week, and then we can send somebody out and see mm -hmm. if you have a part of your trash. So you're going, you're going to fix that problem so you can have somebody come out sure. on the weekend. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, the picture. Right, excuse me, everyone. Uh, Ian Skinner, 427 North New Hampshire Avenue. Uh, if you could give your name one more time. Or name. <laughs> name. Ian Skinner. I thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say good evening to everyone. Now, I have the, a huge problem with my neighbors at the back who rent out. Like, like all these gentlemen, ladies have said before, the, the amount of people that are coming into these homes are, are ridiculous. But when you see a sign in someone's yard that says, do not pee in the yard, that tells you what type of property they've got. Yeah. Now, the last four, four times, the rental started off with underage drinkers, about 25 of them, boys and girls. I told them to call the cops, but when I saw the young girls, 
I thought, what the hell's going to say if they get picked up like this? So I told them, get in the house and clean up. So anyway, cops came. The second lot, after, the, after that, was a bunch of uh, crazies on a bachelor night that brought hookers, hookers back to the house. Five o'clock in the morning, we woke up while this guy's taking one back to Atlantic City. You know, it's not on. It's a neighborhood, as this lady said, it's a neighborhood. Then the third one was a bunch of yahoos again. Now, this last weekend, we had a family in there, nice as can be. Talk to them, everything. But these are the cowboys that we're letting into the city. It's, it's outrageous, it is. We are, it's like Las Vegas now. You know, it's getting ridiculous. And like, like this lady said, there's no law to, to clamp down on these people. And we can't rely on the cops all the time. They're overworked enough. You know, and every meeting you go to, the cops say, call us, call us, call us. You know, even the, even the people who own these houses try and soothe you over by saying, oh, deal with us, not the cops. Yes, yeah, right. That's why we're all here tonight, because of that. They don't do anything about it. They don't take it serious. They're making the money. They don't take it serious that this is a bloody neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. Thank you very much. Anyone else for the third row? We're good? Okay. Gina Skinner. Maybe we can pass her the microphone. Okay. Oh no, not that one, not that one. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for being helpful though. <laughs> okay. My name's Gina Skinner. My name's Gina Skinner. I live on North New Hampshire Avenue. I just want to reiterate what my husband just said. The issue with being told to call the police. It doesn't work. The issue with being told to call the police, okay, is it, it also costs the taxpayer money for the police to come. And every time they come on a nuisance call like this, there might be a crime being committed that they should be paying attention to. So we're not comfortable calling the police every single weekend. It gets ridiculous. But at 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning when everybody's coming home from their night out, they're 15 feet away from our bedroom window. Yeah. I shouldn't have to get up and go and sleep in another room just to get a, a decent night's sleep every weekend. Mm -hmm. And the house behind us is booked right through September. So we have this for the next eight weeks to look forward to. Yeah. It's probably Thank 40% of our neighbors. Mr. Coffin. Derek. Thank you very much. Anyone else from the third row? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll go back. Oh, go ahead. Hello, my name is Beverly Bromley. I'm at 103 Adriatic Avenue in Atlantic City. Um, everything that everyone else has been saying, ditto. And if the homeowners who are renting could at least let their renters know that they should not have sex on the porch. That's the so thank you very much for being here. And I, should, I should mention for the record, um, there were several people who wanted to be here tonight um, and just couldn't because of their schedule. And this would hopefully be the first of, of you know, more of a discussion. One of the owners provided a really neat resource about um, considerations for quality of life. And I, I was very impressed by the document. Um, so I'm not saying that they're an owner in, in the neighborhoods that were just discussed, but um, I, I can tell you firsthand, I got a really impressive document uh, from one of the owners that had some, you know, some of the things that are being suggested. So um, that's, I'm hoping we have at least one owner here that we could get the, get the other side of the story too, just to hear from some of the, you know, uh, the other side of the coin, if you will. Um, anybody else from the third row? Okay, fourth row. We'll start on the closest to the aisle, gentleman in red. Okay, my name is Roman Zhukov, I'm representing Welcome. the owners, and uh, I'm representing five representing owners. Owner. Yeah, owners of the properties that are actually I'm being sorry, owned. Sorry, um, Mr. Zhukov, um, if the public will just we'll give the gentleman his three minutes now, and then you know we'll, we'll see what kind of questions can be addressed up here, and afterwards you guys can have a conversation. All right, thank you. Everybody, yes, everybody was talking about the revenue. Like, we are not creating no revenue for the city, but there is, out of those properties I manage, about five of them as of right now, uh, we're creating just $30,000 in uh, property taxes. That's number one. Uh, yeah, that's maybe funny, but it's not just one piece. Excuse me. 
stuff. It's not just you. a one piece. Also, I invest about fourteen thousand dollars for advertising to advertise not my properties, but Atlantic City in general. I'm bringing other people. Safe state. I have video surveillance on the property, on each and every property that stores the data for two weeks. If anybody have any questions, complaints, you can call to the police and they can request those videos. If you find somebody on the back, or like in the backyard having some fun or like interrupting you or like underage drinking, whatever, you can complain. And if there is something, I can even pay a fine, I can be okay with it. But there is a contract for each and every tenant. You must be 24 years of age or older, and if there is any underage, you, they must be supervised by 25 years or higher. Also, by regulated rental license, I have to have no more than 15 people on each of my property, and I will not allow them to. It is five bedroom, six bedroom houses, so it's more than plenty of space. Backyards, yeah, they private as well. Trash, I have a maintenance after each and every tenant coming in about 30 minutes to an hour, cleaning up the spot for the next tenant to move in. Usually it's a two hour window. So that means if you find any trash on the property or next to my property, give me a fine. I'm fine with paying this fine. When I was driving today from Philadelphia to Atlantic City, I was stuck in traffic on a turn to Ocean City. When I passed it, there were no vehicles coming to Atlantic City. The tourism is your only way of income. Those families that are coming here, they're bringing 14, 15 people going on a beach, buying beer buying toads, going to the casinos. They are bringing revenue over here. They're bringing taxes over here. So if you don't like it, kill the tourism. But what's going to stay here? You're going to kill me, you're going to move me out. Who's going to pay those taxes? I brought the hole in the wall, like that was just a shell house. I invested about $150,000 in it. I built everything from the ground up. I pay taxes on time. Nothing is late. You have problem with me, please address this problem and I will try to fix it. I monitor my tenants. There is very good reviews, 60, 70, like 80. You can go on each and every website I can provide you with. And you can see those reviews. How I treat my tenants, how the houses are clean, what's going on. Mostly families are coming over there for family reunions. You're going to keep them out? Listen, like to the hotel, if you're going to go with 15 people, it's going to cost you how much? It's going to be quite a price. And you're going to be out in a separate room. So you cannot go outside to grill. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. Juba. Appreciate it. Uh, and, you know, I appreciate everybody uh, here and out. Everybody has to speak because we invited everybody. We invited people who do the practice, people who uh, um, encounter the impact of it, and you know it's important to get those perspectives on the record. We appreciate it. anybody else from that gentleman's row. All right, the next gentleman, come up. My name is Boris London. Welcome. Uh, I'm sorry about my language, I'm not speaking English very good, but also one of the houses over here. Uh, I completely agree with this Mr. What Mr. Zhukov uh, spoke about the, uh, behind me the, uh, before. My question to you guys, I have a house on the border to Vancouver. It's very nice, city, clean, not a lot of, uh, I don't know how to explain, but the people is quiet over there. The same rentals, we have the same, everything is there, it looks nice. Look over here, what's happened on this part of this uh, Atlantic City. I am in this, in this city already over around 20 years. What's happened with the city? Who killed the city? What, the people who bring over here the weekend? Bring the money to the city? <coughs> who, what's happened with these houses? We bought the house for, it's completely dead. We rebuild the houses. We bring the money to the city. Who killed this house or this city? Who? Guys, you black and black and black. It's completely dead. Who did it? Who did it this one? Not the people who came just we can. I agree with him. We'll do something bad, please. Put the fine. It's a cannabis, it's my pension plan. I would like to come over here after a couple of years. I wanna live over here. This way I have a couple of houses for support myself right now and for the, my future. For my kids, I would like to live to the home. But I cannot live in the city like this right now. It's completely terrible city. Because all of, not the people who came over here like the Turin to the weekend. It's people over here it's, it, afraid to go outside. It's people who live over here. 
drunk, big garbage. All the garbage from our property going here out right away, right away out. The maintenance do it this way. We found something, the guys who live over here, call, make video. Okay, put the file. It's like owners who rent the property, not really take care of the property. They can stop the play, the, the con, con, exactly these kinds of people. Not for everyone. If you take this, uh, this rental from me, it's my family will be dead. It's my income. We're just working all the time. I have a mortgage for the property. I have to pay. If not, I have to just drop the property. <coughs> it was going again, it's going to be the same story. This house is going down. And put quarters over there, it will be dead. The squad is good. The people come on weekend, and maybe something not. I understand the people, it's not quite nature something here. But who wants quarters over there? It's going to be better. Well, it's red, so that's, that's guys. You cannot see just on one way. We understand it's not really. Well, sometimes it's, it's, it's bothered to the people. I'm finished. Hang on. Thank you. But Thank you. I'm Thank not going to leave over here. Mr. Lancia. Hello. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. Lancia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some of the things that Mr. Lanchev is talking about, it's it, it's not strictly. Mr. Lanchev, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Lanchev. Thank you. Uh, there are issues that are, don't center around this. I mean, if anybody's been paying attention the last year and a half, two years. We've been dealing with some incredible issues in this city and in the process of rebuilding. So, um, point is partially well taken, uh, but it's it's going to take everybody in this room and, and many more than that to you know get us back to where we need to be as a city. Anybody else from that row? Uh, Gentlemen in the white. Hi, my name is Nate Shape. I live uh, on the Cleet Place in Atlantic City, but now I'm renting a place in New Hampshire. Welcome. Um, welcome. Thank you for just for having this meeting. Uh, I have a question and some comments. Uh, Dale, you said by the season you're allowed to um, get a, a permit for the season. <coughs> When you get that permit, say it's a, uh, three months out of the year um, in the summer, uh, you can rent a couple of nights or one night or two nights, mm -hmm. as many times as you want within that season. Yeah, there's no, presently there's no restrictions in the ordinance as far as how many nights or weeks or whatever. It's a seasonal amount. Okay, so here's my comment, because um, I don't know, I'm a realtor in the city, but I've also rented through Airbnb home away from the big sites. <laughs> And with technology, it's impossible to, to control. I mean, to, to, it's impossible to prevent it. But as a homeowner, I know what you mean about people coming in for a night or two and causing all kinds of problems, and they don't care as much. And I've been affected myself. So what I think a good option is possibly just regulate it more, maybe make it longer term or restrict it in the tourism district or certain areas that aren't, in, in, you know, in the res as much of a residential, because you're not going to prevent it. It's just like when Uber came to town. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it, but it's progress, it's technology, and people are doing it, and they're doing it a lot, and I just don't think it, you, you can prevent it, but by, I think in Manhattan, they're doing, they're allowing it for a month at a time because the hotels got together and they were losing a lot of money. Same complaints. So now they, they, they made it at least a month at a time and I think that controls it a lot better. But uh, these are things I guess we get a look at. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from that row? Let's we'll see, we're up to row four. Anybody else? We're good in four? Okay, we'll go to the next set of seats. Lady in the yellow. Hi, Joyce Ruffalo. Welcome. Um, one thing, I was listening to the chatter before the meeting started. You live in a shore community. You're going to have issues with parking and visitors and things like that. That's part of life here. Um, we ha don't have the Airbnbs, but we have apartments and rooms. It's up to the homeowner, just like this gentleman said. Our properties are within a block of where we live. Everybody in the houses, we have a manager. Everybody's got our phone number. If there's a problem, well, we used to do it, but now I have a son old enough. We send him to go fix the problem. You know, a sewer leak or people yelling. You got to do it. It's up to the homeowners. It's not the law. Thank you. 
Jeff. Welcome that row. Right, we're good. We're the next row back. I'm the only one in this row? Yes, sir. Gentleman in the blue. Uh, my name is George Stefanidis. I'm a realtor in the area. So Welcome. So thank you for, for inviting us. And I, and I see both sides doing seasonal rentals. And, and I think kind of the, uh, as I do seasonal rentals for good owners, there's also owners that may not pay attention. So I think, I think good regulation with uh, uh, good property management on the, on the back end to avert some of these issues uh, is the homeowner's responsibility to implement those. But, so, but also from the uh, city standpoint, uh, kind of put some, some additional regulations in to monitor the progress, because it is progress, you know, when you look at it from the revenue that it brings to the city. But I think as times change, some of the uh, regulations that we implement and some of the checks Excuse that we me. do, and some of the checks that we do to make sure that, that we affect the change positively. So, I mean, that's, that's what I have to offer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll go to the next row back, the gentleman in the red. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Nick DeMarco. I live 56 North Bartram. Well, uh, I'm retired from the fire department here. I served 33 years. And during my time, I served as a construction official for the city of Atlantic City. And I retired as an assistant chief in the Fire Prevention Bureau. What I'm hearing with all this tonight is a single family home being changed, basically, depending on the number of people that are in it, into a, either a rooming house or a hotel, mm -hmm. as the codes define it. The change of use from a single family home to uh, a hotel calls for all kinds of things to be done to that property. It's almost like building a brand new building. One of the things that it would have to go through uh, planning and zoning, parking would be an issue, safety in the, in, the, uh, in the building would be a major concern as the fire alarms, sprinkler systems, and means of egress. <coughs> you. Um, what I'm seeing, there's three homes in my neighborhood that are, are currently being used. One, one, uh, one house had eight cars at it. Mm -hmm. Parking enforcement never showed up mm -hmm. the entire week. And I haven't seen them in, in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. around our area. So, you know, 4th of July, it was a joke. It, it's, it's just becoming, I don't know. <coughs> I, I think what you've got to do is you've got to get back in with your construction official and with your fire official and find out how, you know, whether your city ordinance is, is, is in line with what the state regulations are saying. I know the state's in control of everything here, but I don't see anybody here you know, that's, that's talking for that, nor do I see anybody from the fire department or the construction division who all, the construction official ultimately is the one that decides what the use group of a building is. So that's really all I have. Mr. Mark, yeah. before you sit down, did you, is your suggestion that uh, the city have people go through different kinds of um, um, zoning and requirements before they are approved? If, if you're changing the use of the, of the property, Right. You should be going through, you know, to, to find out if that if that property is, if that use is allowed in that in that zone. I mean, you know, where I am, Barsham and Winchester, it's a residential zone. No, it's no, not I, I hear you. I'm, it's I'm not saying, commercial zone. I, I hear you. I, I'm just saying, it is your suggestion? I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm saying, is your suggestion, given your background, that in the future that we have people go through that process yes. before they're able to yes. do it? Okay. Yes, and if I could make one one other suggestion, the the, uh, the gentleman there said, you know, call me. If these places are approved, they should be posted with uh, an emergency number or, or somewhere where somebody can call for them. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, anyone else from that row? Gentleman in the orange, come on up. Okay. 
Dan Kleski from Bartram Avenue. Uh, one of the questions that I have uh, would be, are we collecting luxury tax for these uh, rentals? Uh, seems like the city right now needs every bit of revenue we can get, but I can't see I can't see how they're collecting the uh, luxury tax, and that's very important for our well-being of the Atlantic City. So I would like to see somebody get in and see what we're doing about that. Thank you. I guess for the record, I'm already collecting a big room tax on the sidewalk on the short-term rentals. All right. Mr. Chairman, I mean, we're not collecting room tax either, people. Wow. Right. No taxes. Nothing. Is there a way that we could do that? Yes. No? Absolutely. Yes, there is. Absolutely. Absolutely, there is. Absolutely, there is. All right, hang on, guys. Hang on, guys. Thanks. <laughs> we could contract with, for instance, Airbnb. A number of other municipalities in New Jersey have done so. So that's what we are in the process of addressing okay. as well. Yeah. 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 Sure, the director. We're here tonight to hear your concerns me. and ideas. And, uh, you know, from here we hopefully uh, review our existing city ordinances and codes and make the changes as appropriate that would benefit uh, the city overall. So, again, we're here to, to really get input from you, your ideas, and then we're going to try to create or change some of the legislation we have to enable us to better monitor and regulate and control what's going on. That's the goal of tonight's meeting. And uh, in response, actually, to not to single them out, but uh, one of the gentlemen that spoke, uh, two people back, uh, mentioned how the state's not here, and you mentioned certain other entities that are not here. And that's actually for a reason, because, you know, it is still our town. Uh, whether the, you know, the state of uh, New Jersey through Trenton decided certain things, and we have a responsibility to look at things that are happening in our community and talk about it, like we are tonight, um, to make intelligent decisions, and then hopefully uh, through your legislators, you know, the councilman and I, uh, working with the administration, if there needs to be some type of change to the code, um, that we're able to do something after consulting with you first, rather than us come up with what we think is a great idea and then come to you. So, um, you know, point is well taken. Anyone else from that row? All right, we'll go to the next row back. Um, lay your hand up. Come on up. And uh, I'm actually don't rent in any houses here, but my friend does. And uh, I came here to here. I was about to buy the house here, and I saw I can I can rent it out. Oh, yeah. But um, uh, what I'm looking on, I'm thinking problem not about people who's renting out the houses. Those houses are very clean and neat. They are maintaining their houses. They want to bring more people. But uh, more problem about immigration, there are many people from poor countries who's renting not the short term. They just come in here, it's their lifestyle. To there are kids running on the street without shoes and very dirty kids and without any supervision of parents. And those people not renting short term houses. And uh, who hired them? Casinos, private hotels. It's, it's not the short-term rentals. Who's bringing trash here? Not people from America who's coming just for the short-term. It's uh, people from those countries. It's their lifestyle. You, it's, it's not, I don't think it's a problem about short-term rental. It's about those people who bring in dirt here and I don't know, maybe you can teach them. That's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And for the record, could you give me the name on? Okay. Hino. 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 Thank you. All right. Anybody else from that row? Okay, we're good. We're good. All right, we'll go back a row. The gentleman with the glasses. Come on. I don't think I need a mic. Sounds good. Jeff Rosenberger, recent resident, uh, re entry resident into Atlantic City. I lived here before I lived here again. And quite a few years ago, we, we quoted Bruce Ward. Historically, Bruce Ward, when he was solicitor, council person, outlawed weekly rentals. He was a push behind it. And they went to court. They lost. 
So let's take a look at a few different things. I've been involved in the round real estate for 42 years. It is 20 years since I made money from a rental. I am not here for self-interest or from renting a rental, okay? So we, we heard about the luxury tax. The state legislature right now is looking at bills to tax the nightly rentals, the Airbnbs, the vacation HBOs. The fact that we don't know that, I'm somewhat nonplussed. The luxury tax was initially established in 1944 to rebuild our boardwalk, and the state's been grabbing it since because we haven't effectively done that, and the state has lessened our inspectors who have ordinances that they can enforce on noise, on parking, on control, and we as a regulatory body can put forth these are the rules to which you agree, but we haven't. And we are always 10 years behind the eight ball and reactionary instead of proactionary, so thank you, Jesse, for doing this. Now let me address a few other things. I just lived in a three bedroom condo in Ventnor. I was living next to a 12 bedroom house that was regularly an Airbnb. And like the Ruffalo lady said, thank you, we're a resort town. I knew it was part of the process. To continue, many years ago, 40, 45 years ago, I don't remember. But in the town of Margate, where I was the instrumental one that did all that construction along the bay and made that town valuable. My office, was taken to court because it had five unrelated people in a house on a winter rental. My office went before the court and won because of the square footage and it was the FBI they were suing. So you are on very treacherous territory, but you're not on unfirm territory. Uphold the noise ordinances. Enforce what you have to enforce. No one, not a landlord in this place, I guarantee you, cares if you kick out their tenant at 3 in the morning because they're making noise because at 4 in the morning they're damaging their property. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. So, so thank, you. thank you. Find the balance. This is about balance. It's not about reaction. To the gentleman up here who invested in our town and spent $150,000 every day on hustling properties, so I'm getting twenty, forty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 for things I could get 50, 50 million for down beach where I left. We need to do what we can to rebuild our city before we lose the last vestiges of homeowners left. Thank you. Anybody else from that one? Two gentlemen? All right, so we're good. Did anybody else join us in progress on this side of the room? Or anybody who didn't speak or would like to? Uh, we're going to close off this side of the room. We'll start from the back, going on this side. So, um, it, start with the back row, the gentleman with the hat. Are you, you interested in speaking? Do, do, no? All right, coming forward a row. As you know, I didn't want that's too complicated. I'll start from the front. I apologize. <laughs> I'm going to correct myself. You should have corrected myself. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I will right, start here in the front row. Closest to the aisle, gentlemen in the brown shirt. We are Jerry and Mary Keener. We're 117 North Kingston. Well, I just want to echo what already's been said. I, the horse is out of the barn. We're, we're going to have this type of activity. We're a sewer community. We just want to regulate it. We want to live in a neighborhood. We don't want people coming in, taking every parking space. We don't want to see people using the beaches and our facilities without any preparation for us. We just want something fair out of this whole thing. And, and as it stands, that's not the case. It's great to be Thank you. All right, anybody else from the front row? Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm John Murphy. Well, thank you. Um, an owner, my wife and I here, Rebecca, purchased a home on South Kingston about four years ago uh, with the idea of coming down and vacationing in Atlantic City. Um, turns out we started to rent the house. That went well for us. Uh, the house behind us was run down. Uh, we didn't really want the, somebody else to pick our neighbors, so we purchased that home. We invested about $200,000 to fix that home up as well. Um, and then um, a bank actually contacted me about a home that was a short sale across the street uh, because they stopped paying taxes or their mortgage. Uh, so they asked me if I wanted to buy that house. So we've kind of become owners by accident. Um, I appreciate everyone's comments. Um, I think anyone who knows us We'll tell you we do everything we possibly can to make sure our neighbors are happy. We have signs posted in the houses. We 
vet our guests thoroughly. We rent to no one under 25 years old. If there's one person who's 24, they don't come in. Um, we talk to everyone before they come into the house to make sure they know who we are and what we expect. Um, that will not eliminate some of the things you guys have talked about, frankly. That you might still have things occur despite all those things. That can't be stopped. Um, you know, a luxury tax is not going to eliminate some of the challenges you've heard. You're not going to feel better if we pay more, but these situations still happen. So, you know, I, I don't know if I have an answer per se, uh, but my our experience is that the people who rent our homes are typically families. It's anniversaries. It's you know people who wouldn't even consider Atlantic City prior to us renting to them. They tell us we would rather go to Duck or this other. We'd rather be in Atlantic City, but we're, we're scared to go there. Um, but your house has great reviews. You seem like you have your act together. We're going to give it a shot. So, from our perspective, we bring a lot of different people, and it's never competing with casinos. I want to kind of put that out there too. People who rent from us are never it's like, okay, we're considering a casino or your house. Uh, they're coming for an experience. Um, and Jesse, I sent you a kind of a, a market analysis to your uh, online email address there. Um, I work for Oracle, I do market analysis for a living. So I kind of went online, I, I looked at the global marketplace for rentals, I looked at the local demographics. I mean, Atlantic City has the fewest short-term vacation rental homes of all the beaches here. There's like 105. Ocean City has over 300. Brigantine has over 300. I mean, this, this problem is like per 1,000 people, it's like 2.6 rentals. It's minuscule. So I don't know that the problem is a number of rentals because the other towns have more. And then globally looking at it, I mean, millennials, they, they don't even want to stay in hotels. There's a bunch of statistics in that presentation I sent you about where millennials want to stay. It is not in hotels. They want to be together in a house. And frankly, for them to consider Atlantic City, the houses have to be nice. And so the gentleman who spoke in the back, if someone is doing something at 2 a.m., they certainly, we want you to call the police or call us because they're going to damage the house. We want our houses to be nice. We want great reviews. It's a misconception if you think we don't care about you, though. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for starters, you mentioned about sending me something, and the you know, same applies to my colleague. And, and you can go on the city website and get our email addresses, but I'll, I'll just give it to you um, for your convenience. It's J Kurtz, so J K U R T Z at cityofatlanticcity.org. You're welcome to submit anything after tonight, any further thoughts, if you have a study or something like that, and we'll make sure that it goes in our committee packet for what we're reviewing. And you know, same thing with my colleague here, Kay Shabazz at cityofatlanticcity.org, and we, we welcome the input. So um, I think we're good on the, on the first row. Yes, okay, sure. Mr. Murphy, are you a short term? Uh, is you, are your rentals mostly short term or are they longer? Uh, it's vacation homes. So we rent for various durations. There's a guest in one of our homes that's there for a month. Okay. We've had guests for a night. We don't really uh, discriminate either way how long they want to yeah, rent. Try and, the full yeah. range. Full rent, yes. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Thank All right, we'll go to the second row. We'll start with the aisle. Start on the aisle. We'll do it. Good, yep. Yeah. Lady in the way. Hi, I'm Cecile Hershkovitz. I live at 111 North Annapolis. Welcome. Um, thank you. I've been there uh, going on 10 years now. Uh, it's a part-time home, so I uh, <coughs> I do my summer rental at my home place there. Um, I, I appreciate the fact of what the uh, people who've invested in the neighborhood. I walk the neighborhood a lot with my dog, and I've seen the dirt on the street for people that are long-term rentals. I appreciate the people that are fixing up the houses and investing. Uh, one in particular, and I don't know what you own or don't, but uh, there's one on, on Winchester that uh, it backs to the bay. It's 4015 Winchester. And okay, well, it was disgusting looking before they came in, and it looks very nice. Now, there's a family there this week that I think just came the other day, very nice. Two weeks ago, there was a huge bachelor party. And I wasn't there, so I, I heard about this. Huge bachelor party, it was a problem. And I don't know why the neighbors didn't call the police. So the point is that I appreciate what they're doing. I don't want to see abandoned houses. I don't want to see trash. There's got to be a compromise. Um, perhaps there has to be a compromise with more you know, a luxury tax, more going to the city, more accountability. If there is a problem, that we can get in touch with the owners rather than the police and bother the police. Um, maybe more 
Weekly rentals, like someone suggested, a Sunday to Sunday, Saturday to Saturday, whatever it is in the other short towns. Um, thank you. Thank you. And um, I should mention, in addition to calling the, the non-emergency line uh, on the police side, um, the director, you mentioned, will put a hotline out there. Uh, but even if you just call the, and this goes to anybody, you know, call the department during business hours. Um, you know, we love our licensing and inspection team. We love our police force. And, and that's their job. You know, their job is to um, receive our concerns, to vet them, and to respond to them. They do. They do, they do a good job with that. Um, sometimes, if there's a persistent issue, we feel like, ah, you weren't. We're not getting anywhere. We can never feel that way. We have to renew ourselves to you know the challenge of keeping our neighborhoods in order and you know reporting things, even if it's that fourth time or that fifth time. Because uh, I don't see many quitters here, so we can't quit on it. Right? So thank you very much. Uh, anybody else in the second row? Okay, go ahead. My name is Dora Grossman. I am one of the neighbors of this gentleman who lovingly bought three party houses on a half of a block that goes to the beach. I moved into my house in 1997. I moved in there, it was a res zoned residential with the intention of retiring in that house. Living on that block has become a living nightmare for me. There is nothing good about it. He did not buy three broken down houses. One of the houses he moved into, someone had fixed up, and I think they started the party house. Next door, there was a person who lived there for 30 years, and then he bought another house on the block. This is not about him. Here's the problem. They are commercially used. He bought three houses in a residential area. You cannot live in three houses in a residential area. Sunday, I go to the gym. Sometimes I come back from the gym, I can't get down my street because it's check-in, check-out time. Friday, Sunday, and they check out at 12, they're checking back in in the afternoon. This goes on 24-7, 12 months a year. My taxes are supposedly very high because I'm beachfront. I can't let my children or my grandchildren out on my deck because behind me is another party house for two, a halfway house, and then another group who's sitting here. They have a house which I went to a tax appeal. They said they rented out to their relatives. They got a lot of relatives. <laughs> Number two, you're talking about I have from the Airbnb how many they're supposed to rent out to. Who's checking? Nobody's checking. I have smelled pot next door. I don't like it. Maybe it'll become legal. I've said to them, I'm having a barbecue with my grandchildren. Could you please stop? This is unbearable. Three o'clock in the morning, they're having a barbecue right opposite my bedroom. When I'm here, I don't know whether I'm going to sleep through the night. I feel that I am entitled to quiet enjoyment of my house that I bought in a residential area. Now, they said this has been going on forever. In 2012, Atlantic City decided to enter into a consent order. They never took it to the judge. This was a consent order. As a result of this consent order, December 5th, 2012, Atlantic City passes an ordinance with no teeth whatsoever. They're going to charge these people winter $100, spring $100, summer, nothing. There is no regulation. This gentleman can rent his house out Sunday, finish at 12, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the next group checks in. Thank there you. are limousines on my block. Thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. And now, uh, anything, uh, Ms. Wilson, anything else that you get to get to, feel uh, free to submit, and we'll definitely consider that. Um, as part of the, that, that is a good question that was raised. Um, and maybe this is something for future work. But director, has there been any thought about um, checking or how you would check the number of occupants for a given rental against like what's actually on the CEO or place? Are you going to check? Excuse us. Excuse us. Yeah, my turn to ask a question. Excuse me. When they register, the uh, unit is inspected based on the the size of the common areas. 
that the number of bedrooms, the size of bedrooms, determines what the capacity of that seasonal rental can be. Because I'm just thinking if there's a place that is um, has a CO after through the process for let's say 10 and then they end up renting to 20, like what, how, how that's just maybe food for thought how we would enforce that, you know, it's um, that's a challenge. Well, we, we have similar challenges with long-term rentals as well. I mean, there's always a, a challenge to enforce the law, you know, whatever the circumstance is. Um, that's that's something that struck me from your comments. Uh, uh, I see people were reading from uh, papers, I would just uh, suggest, if they want to, if they could just give them to Monica, anything that they read from they want us to look at so we can consider it uh, and put it together uh, for a record. Right. Anybody? Anybody. Anybody. Because what we want to do, uh, we realize, not speaking for the uh, council, you can speak very articulately for itself, but we realize that three minutes is not a long amount of time. So I see people have things that they prepare, and if you will give them to uh, the assistant clerk, we can uh, consider them at length and, and uh, go. We don't want you to think that because you prepare something that costs, that takes less than <laughs> longer than three minutes to present, that we don't want to hear it. We want to hear the totality of what everyone has to present. So if you want to uh, turn it into it, we'll look at it, and the councilman will give it to us on the committee, and we'll consider it as we move forward. I just have your ordinances, which you should have. And if you don't have them, I will provide no, it. No, we have access to the ordinances. We have access to the ordinances, that's all. The and your ordinances. Okay, but I'll provide uh, you with them. And then somebody else had referenced uh, a market study. Mm -hmm. So like, things like that are very helpful, and we'll definitely consider them. So that point will take it. Anybody else from the second row? All right, we'll go back to the third row. All right, and close to the aisle. Good evening. First of all, thank you very much, Mr. Hertz, for uh, inviting us this evening. Um, and what's your name for the record? My name is Sandy Costanza. Welcome. 128 South Bartram and two Bill Anthony Place. And my husband Matt and I live in Woodfield. Uh, and that's just my long I'll just read this. Okay. Um, you ask us to tell our story. So that's basically what I'm going to try to do. Let me tell you a little bit about a little bit about the houses that Matt and I own and what we have done recently to restore and maintain them. When acquired, these houses showed sign of neglect signs of neglect and were in serious need of repair and renovation. Over $100,000 was spent on the Bartram property to install a new roof, new heating system, new deck, front porch, and upgrades to the electrical system. The home on Delancey, purchased in December 2016, required over $60,000 to replace tw 21 windows and to make other necessary repairs. We also addressed the broken sidewalk and we continue to clean up the surrounding area. The house is still in need of some electrical upgrades. In addition to structural and maintenance issues, much capital has been invested in appointing and decorating our homes. For example, the home on Bartram Avenue contains a great deal of Atlantic City memorabilia, including old photographs of Miss American contestants and souvenirs of pageants past. We also have had families of Miss Rhode Island, Miss, Miss Louisiana, and Miss Delaware as guests. In short, we have made a long-term investment in preserving the history and lore of Atlantic City. I invite anyone who is interested in what we are offering to visit us and see the properties. For those of you who are not familiar with online services, we talked about it a little bit uh, this evening. Your home is presented online in its very best form, great pictures, surrounding area, and so on, and includes all charges. Prospective guests search for the site, search the site for a property that they feel meets their vacation needs best. It is then up to the owner to set criteria for these guests. Ours is strict. No one under 25 under, under, under any circumstances is allowed to rent. Identification is required when people check in. And house rules are set and posted. The threat of losing a $500 security deposit also helps guests of any age to be mindful of house rules. We are conscientious in meeting the regulations that govern seasonal rentals. As required, we register, I thought it was four times annually, at a rate of $300 per season per unit. Bug certification is separate, at we pay $70 per unit, and fire certification is needed twice annually. While cumbersome and expensive, I applaud these requirements since they help owners to maintain high standards and I welcome tightly controlled home rental market. 
door. Again, Mr. Kurtz, you mentioned opportunities. We welcome guests in our homes from not only our country, but the world. During this year alone, we have been host to guests from as far away as Singapore and London. We've even attracted guests from competitive states, and we have, we've gotten great reviews. Long weekends and shorter term rentals have proven popular with convention goers and special interest groups, such as golfers and sports, group, uh, sports groups. Upon arrival, our guests are provided a gift basket containing brochures and coupons to various stores and attractions. Tanger outlets can attest to that. Hey, thank you very much. Sorry to cut you off the ministry. I know mean, that's so hard. Uh, thank you for composing your thoughts. We're going to make sure we have a copy of them, and we will definitely share them. Thank you very much for uh, you know, putting together your thoughts like that. All right. Anybody else from that crowd? All right. And I'll feel free to grab the mic if you'd like. Can't hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, it's recently been brought to my attention. This is one of the sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll um, go for it. I live across the street from a rental, and it's recently been brought to my attention that it's listed on Airbnb or Home Away, one of those, um, and it has six bedrooms, four baths, and can uh, sleep 18. Well, I know that footprint before the, the house was sold is the same as mine. Four bedrooms, three baths. So my question is, how can they, this, you know, this owner increase the number of bedrooms? Did they go through license and inspection? Was it done through construction? So what kind of process, you know, can they increase the, the girth of, of uh, renters, um, you know, from what would be the original seat of... If they made changes like that, they'll have to have permits for construction. And I don't know, I'm just thinking that, I'm just doing the night, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, when we... What's we, exactly? Um, I don't know, Chris, do you know the address? I, I really don't know. And actually, and, you know, I want to shy away just to, if you don't mind, Director, just to kind of get away from any type of... To circumstance so I right there. I don't want to make it first. Yeah. If you want to get the I'm info absolutely. afterwards, yeah. To. Okay. Yeah, but I also, you know, I, I feel that we live in a resort town. We live in a great town, and it's important to to revitalize. So for me, I don't care if you're renting for one night, two nights a week. And someone had said that we really need to bring families into into the rentals and do a Saturday to Saturday or whatever. But we need to revitalize the community to want families to come here. We don't have enough for children to do. You know, so I think that we need to think about that. Um, there is a way that we can force a luxury tax that goes to the city, but it has to be used constructively. It can't just say, okay, let's go to the city, and where does it go? There's a lot of corruption, there's a lot of mis mismanagement of funds and misuse. So I guess that's all I really want to say, but thank you. All right. Thank you for oh. listening. And, uh, if people have particular um, properties, um, if you're, you're more than welcome to call up the department, uh, email it in, um, and they'll verify, you know, whether or not that construction received permits, and you know, that, and that goes the same with any type of improvement, whether it's for short-term rental or not. You know, they're very responsive to that um, in the department. All right, uh, gentlemen, the blue shirt, blue checker. Yeah, I'm Sandy's husband, uh, Matt Costanzo, and I just want to add something she couldn't get to, which I think is important. Great. And it, uh, it really relates to the fact that the city benefits from rentals. Through home rentals, Atlantic City becomes accessible to countless families who cannot afford the charges levied by most hotels and motels. In addition to the affordable rates, these same families are provided a more intimate experience with the city and its unmatched resources. They become ambassadors of goodwill for us. Groups engage in competitive contests and reunions of families and friends prefer the intimacy of a private home versus the less personal atmosphere found in hotels and motels. Home rentals provide the ultimate bonding experience for these people. The city gains by seeing decaying real estate and declining assessments replaced with homes that have been renovated, brought up the code, and reassess at a higher value in some cases. Neighborhood blight is replaced by a vibrant community. Again, as Sandy said, we want to thank you, Mr. Kurtz, and other members here for this opportunity to address you.
Oh, you th thank you for participating. We all, we all appreciate that here. Okay. All right, um, next row back. You interested? Okay. All right, we'll go to the next set of seats. Um, we'll start closest to the aisle, so I'm the lady in the pink. And uh, I just want to say that... Uh, oh, please start with your name for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Ivana Euland, and Welcome. I also represent my son, Stephen Lascarides. Uh, we, between the two of us, my family owns five vacation rentals in the city. And um, so we have been doing this since 2005. Uh, I just want to want everyone to know that there's, you cannot make the uh, short-term rentals illegal in Atlantic <coughs> City without making them illegal through the entire Jersey Shore. We live at the Jersey Shore. They have short-term rentals from Cape May all the way up to where New Jersey ends. So in the year of 2012, um, the city tried to uh, put uh, ordinances, in fact, that would ban short-term rentals in the city. There was a coalition of landlords, a number of them are here right now, that we got together and hired uh, Stearns and Weinroth uh, attorneys, and um, we uh, sued the city of Atlantic City in that regard, and we won. Uh, the city cannot limit uh, the short-term, cannot limit the short-term rentals in Atlantic City. And uh, to address neighbors' concerns, we did a, we did a uh, best practices with our tenants uh, where rules of, of, of behavior and so forth, as well as reaching out to our neighbors with our contact information to call us whatever was necessary if there was a problem with any of the tenants. And that has, that has been working, as far as I'm concerned, pretty well in the neighborhood where most, most of us have our homes, which is in the inlet area of Atlantic City. I've had some calls from my neighbors in the middle of the night, which I have addressed in the middle of the night. It doesn't happen very often, but if it does occur, I'm right there, and I'm there within 10 minutes because I live right there. Uh, we limit the number of people that are allowed into our properties, but sometimes when we have two adjacent properties, an entire family for a wedding or a party or a family reunion will rent two houses together, and that will give them a lot of them, and then they use the big house as their party house. But uh, as for the most case, our tenants are following the rules. If they don't follow the rules, they lose their deposit. That has not happened very often, but it does happen on occasion. We enforce the rules, and that is what the city of Atlantic City needs to do, is to follow the ordinances that are already in place. And there's ordinance to address the noise, the parking, the traffic, all the other things that people have brought up here tonight can be addressed without shutting down a multi-million dollar business. Our economic impact on the city is, is in the millions. Excuse us. Is in the, in the absolute millions. In 2012, I did an economic impact on one of our smaller properties, and it was over a million dollars that they, these young men and young women come in and they do business with all the businesses that are around us. In our case, uh, Gardner's Basin is quite the recipient. As I have a little booklet of all the businesses that are down there and encourage them to partake in the businesses that we have, from the liquor stores all the way to the restaurants. In addition to that, um, we, um, we encourage them to do the parasailing and all the other things Thank and you. amenities that are in the city. Cool. So they spend a lot of Thank money you very here. Much. Thank you very much. All right, anyone else in that place? Lady in black, come on up. And if you want to grab the mic here, if you want to speak, whatever's easier. There's a mic up on the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kurtz, Mr. Shabazz, and the rest of the committee. We appreciate the platform for everyone to give their feedback. Um, my name is Renee Brooks, and I am a citizen of Atlantic City. This is not a Southern Jersey accent, but my heart is here in Southern Jersey along with Atlantic City. Um, I just want to take it up to a global perspective because, first of all, 
I hear everybody's concerns and I respect them. First of all, and first and foremost, we call Atlantic City our home. Um, we all saw the downturn, the collapse of the casino industry, and we literally saw our city collapsing from under our feet. <clears throat> we all have investment here. And the one thing that I saw, I've lived in many metropolitan areas throughout the country from Atlanta to Philadelphia to St. Louis. And I call Atlantic City home because I think we do have great heart, but we also have great potential. And one thing I hear here is not only a problem for people that want to enjoy their peaceful home and their peaceful community, but it's also a good problem to have because I hear people are wanting to still after everything, the negative press, the negative words about our home, people still want to come here. And I think that in itself is a miracle waiting to happen. And with everyone involved in this room, and I mean everyone, I think we can make it happen. Because literally the one thing that communities sometimes don't hit upon and make happen is everyone coming together because we are a community. The commonality here is every one of us in this room, for different reasons, we want to see Atlantic City thrive. And I think my point tonight is economic development with respect to those who grew up here, to those who call this their home and perhaps don't have second properties and investment properties, but we all need to think about, do we want homes sitting vacant or do we want mortgages that are paid, whether it by a homeowner or by a second home investor, and do we want property taxes paid regardless of how much the property taxes are? I think we would all agree that the answer to that is yes, 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 we want those things to happen. And if we all could work together, occupancies, we could put occupancy plates on the vacation rentals outside just like they do at fitness clubs and everything else. Occupancy this, you could ask the number at any time. We all agree there should be enforcement. I believe the people that have good intent as a business owner and a home renter would agree with those things. If those people don't agree with those things, then perhaps they don't belong in our community. So to the people who want to call it their home, let's do this. Could we possibly come up with a committee of people that share different perspectives to come together as a community and develop a solution? Because we can talk about the problems, we've been talking about them for years now, but I think if we all sit down, we really have the same concern. We want to make it good. We want to make it better. And Airbnb, millennials, one of our um, goals for economic development is to attract millennials here to invest and buy homes. Millennials use Airbnb. That's how they stay. They don't use hotels anymore. Think about those things. And I know my time's up. But all I would ask is, can we please, 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 those that care, come together from the legislature to the citizens and make a solution happen? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think Who here is an officer in one of our civic associations? All right, so for starters, uh, we've got great civic associations in town, and I would encourage not just you, uh, but anybody who wants to work further towards solutions and coming up with ideas for both this or anything else, approach one of the civic association leaders you know, before you head out, because um, it's important for groups to happen and come up with things apart from what government does. And that, that'll be something that uh, makes things very healthy in this town. And whatever solutions or ideas or points or best practices you come up with, please then in turn share them with the committee. Um, and, and a big thing here is that we're doing this before the state does something. And I probably shouldn't say that because then they'll do something tomorrow. But I digress. Um, but it, I think it's important with these things that are, are happening in society, whether it's this or Uber. Like Uber, very few people wanted to even touch the topic or have a meeting like this. And I remember at the time thinking, maybe this is something we should talk about. And, you know, it's gonna, Uber's going to be a little different in Atlantic City than it is in Vineland or Sussex County or Warren County. Like we're a unique community. We should try to get out front and do something, and we did. Uh, and my hope is that through doing this meeting and working with my colleague and the members of the administration and with you, that we can do something that makes sense for us, whatever that is, and take into account the different issues, and before somebody's forcing an arrangement on us. Uh, and I think that definitely makes a lot of sense. Going back to the audience, the next row back, anybody like to speak? All right, come on up. Hi, my name is Wendy Jackson, and um, well, as I listen to some of the horror stories, 
Um, I believe that some, most of them are an exception to the rule. Some of those incidences are isolated because a lot of the property managers do maintain their, um, their properties. And we don't, as, as far as I know, Atlantic City has the highest foreclosure rate in the nation. So these are, what, these are some of the things that we do to prevent the, the foreclosure rates to, you know, we don't want them to increase and we want our property value to increase. So by bringing in all this revenue to the city, because I know a lot of the residents or the tenants, whatever you want to call them, guests, they spend millions of dollars in the city and we want to generate that revenue. Um, let's see. Um, and again, our, uh, the, the, the residents or the guests do patronize the city. So um, I do want to applaud those, uh, those property owners who are, who are renting their homes and bringing all these guests and people to our city to just so that our city can continue to prosper. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, I want to know quickly is um, Airbnb, even though they couldn't come tonight, did send, submit some formal testimony to our committee. And uh, if we have another gathering like this, they're hoping to send a representative. And we want to try to do the same thing with Verbo. I always call it Verbo. People say it's V-R-B-O. I like calling it Verbo. Uh, that's what I like. And so we, we want to invite those stakeholders to participate as well. All right, anybody else from that row? All right, we'll go back one more row. Anyone would like to speak? All right, come on. Okay, sure. Hi, my name is Christine Ward. And I live so Christine's one of pardon me? Ward. Ward, welcome. No, no relation to that other ward here. <laughs> um, I live at 106 South Kingston Avenue, and I probably could reiterate everything that people are saying about, okay, we live on the street, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of gridlock. Uh, my big concern uh, that I want to address right now, and I think um, somebody else might have said something, the limit of people that are allowed in the house or in the houses on the street, and I think there's a CO that's, that's stipulates how many people can be in the house. And as well as um, John mentioned that he vets the people that he does rent to. Actually, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I should have corrected the um, person before. I, I want to try not to make it personal. So we'll okay. try not to yeah, name the people by okay. name. Um, and I think that is, a, a, you know, you can say that's great that he tries, that the people that rent the house try to um, limit the amount of people. But not being there on site, poses a problem sometime. Two rental units, had a family reunion, there were 52 people in the two houses. And I don't think that that, you know, that that's uh, the limit. I mean, I think that that's over the limit. Uh, a school bus pulled down the street one day, 29 people got out and into another house. That poses a problem for me when it, it there's so much noise that goes on at night that, um, you know, I had, you know, you don't want to have a confrontation. I've had the, um, uh, there's some nights that I can't sit out on my, my deck. I mean, there's somebody puking across the street. <coughs> Sunday morning breakfast, the five foot penis is out there and the ladies are jumping all over it. Not what I want, not what I want in my neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, anybody else in that room? Yes, sir. Yeah, Barry Bender, 105. Sorry, one more time. Barry Bender, 105. Welcome. Liberty, yeah. In economics, they talk about a term called externalities. And I'd like to just give you a little, and this is the basic theory that we have to understand here. When there's a commercial transaction between two people and the third person suffers as a result of that commercial transaction, that's an externality. And, and, and this is what, exactly what we have here, whether it's, whether it's fornication on the porch from my friends over here, or whether it's the urination in the bushes or the vomiting or calling me names or this and that. These are all externalities. The fact that we have to pick up the phone and call the police, that's an externality. I have a job now. It's called, I have to now call somebody at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's not my job. You know, I mean, so it's, what, what, and, and the way you, you resolve these externalities, and this is what government is all about. Government passes legislation. The businesses have to comply with the legislation, protecting the consumer and protecting the public from the businesses. That's what we're asking for. That's what we need. We need intervention from the city. We need regulation. And we need enforcement. And we need them to comply with regulation. Voluntary compliance doesn't work. You, 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 I mean, let's look historically with business. It never works. You show me a corporation or any business that voluntarily is going to comply. And, and, and no, they're not going to do that. They could talk about all these letters and things they give to their, 
renters, but no one's following it, you know, there's, there's the peeing and the puking and the fornication, it's, it's happening, right? So that's what it is, and that's, we're victims of externalities right now. And we're saying, if we're living now in a commercial zone, if my residential suite is now a commercial zone and I'm a victim, then we, we, need, we need regulation, we need compliance, we need enforcement, all right? Well, I think the idea has been brought up. I, I certainly believe, in, in, in my experience, and I'm living next to the same uh, uh, house that the Skinners live next to, and all these in this neighborhood. The neighborhood back there, what they used to call Oceanside, Oceanside 2, so back, you know, off, off of, um, uh, look, I, I think these, I think minimum rentals would be a great idea. Make it a week. I mean, isn't, isn't that kind of a standard thing up and down the shore? That would bring in, that, you know, they could still make their money, they could still rent out, but you have better, You'll have a better clientele. You mean you'll have maybe more families, things like that. Excuse me, uh, sir. Sorry, pardon. I mean, I think. I mean, yeah, they, they should be entitled to rent under proper regulation and rules, right? Uh, occupancies, length of stay, um, you know, uh, and you know, and proper ages, you know, and, and, and something that's reasonable that they can make their money. You know, money, money, money. It's, it's, they need to make that. They, but we have to. We have to have our peace. We're entitled. You know, their rights right now are superseding our rights. Their rights to making money is superseding our rights to the quiet enjoyment of our properties that we pay very large real estate taxes. I have a four-year-old daughter that can't go out in the backyard most times on the weekends because of naked guys peeing and, and, and cursing next door. That's not right. That's right. So, is, is, so we understand, is the sticking point in your mind the overnight well, I think, I think basically the sticking point is the overnights would work if, if, the, if the owners were actually monitoring. I mean, that's a big part. Someone raised the issue when you stay in a hotel, you have security guards and this and that. Well, there's nothing like that. We are the security guards. We've been deputized. You know, I don't want to hear this nonsense. You call us. No, you take care of it. It's your commercial enterprise. If you're in business, it's your commercial enterprise. You take care of it. It's not my job. It's not my job. They need to pay money. They need to invest money. Maybe they have to get together and they need to invest in a security company, a private company that they pay money to that goes around and monitors. Let them incur some expense from the profits they're making so that my rights are not being, uh, you know, I, we're, sec we're secondary citizens now in our own neighborhoods, in our own house. So you're saying the owners are lax in their oversight? Oh, absolutely. I don't care what they say, they're lax. And, and we, we can come, we have so many examples. I mean, it's ridiculous. They are totally lax. Totally. Okay. Yes. Excuse, so, sorry, we have to get through everybody at least once. Sorry. Um, we'll, um, anybody else? Thank you very much, Mr. Bennett. Anybody else in there? Yeah. Just okay. real quickly to reiterate. Uh, what's your name for My the name's Jennifer Odell. I live at 105 Liberty Avenue. Well. Um, I want Atlantic City to thrive. I want my neighbors to make money on their you know, investment properties. I would want that opportunity for myself. If I had a rental house, I would not want the, like the occupants of that rental house to be dragging the inside furniture outside, leaving out in the rain. I wouldn't want the house to look you know, in disrepair. Um, I, you know, I, I, I want also to be able to go outside with my four-year-old daughter and play with bubbles without hearing ridiculous nonsense about hookers. I want to be able to garden in my front yard without finding used condoms. Like these are the things that we're dealing with. And it has gone from isolated incidents yes. to now every weekend watching them unload, thinking, oh crap, what's it going to be like tonight? Oh, this, oh, it's all boys. Oh, it's a, it's a hockey team. Oh, oh crap. It's like frat house party time. And then wondering all night, should I call the police? Is it too early? Should, is it too late? Maybe we'll just go to bed. The baby sleeps anyway. That kind of thing. Um, so it really, what my husband's saying is right. I feel like we do have a job. I don't want that job. I don't want it. Um, it's not it fair to us, and it's not fair to the people who own these places either to have these idiots acting like fools. Um, I don't know. I think everything's kind of been said 10,000 different ways from all over the place, but that's, that's our reality. Um, when you see a bunch of drunk, you know, young guys up on a third floor um, roof. On your house. On, you know. We, and you're wondering, roof, should I call the roof, police before one of them falls, or should I do it after? It's, it's scary. <laughs> yes. You know, do I go past them while they're throwing footballs? Is my kid going to get a football to the head? Right. You know, it's that kind of thing. So yes. it, it really is, it's not just every now and again. It's every weekend. 
and it's and it's and we're surrounded in my neighborhood in our in our block about 40 percent of the houses are rentals so they're all around us so i now have to get up at three o'clock in the morning and go, which one is it now should i wander the neighborhood before i call the cops so i have the right house that's kind of where we are i don't want to call the police i don't want to call you guys all the time it sucks i'm on liberty between Maine and New Hampshire. Yeah, we're right in the middle of it. We're in the belly of the beast. <laughs> we're in the belly of the beast. That's what we are. All right. <laughs> okay. And, and I appreciate everybody's patience and everything. We're, we're about 80%, 90% done with the room. And, you know, this has been, been very constructive and awesome. So anybody else on the on that? Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, my name's Lee Fawn, and I'm Welcome. a resident of Atlantic City been here for a little over 12 years, came from Nebraska. Not only did I buy property here in Atlantic City, I also have my financial services firm here as well. My whole strategy in reference to coming and uplifting where I came from, <coughs> Nebraska, Philadelphia, then to Atlantic City, was trying to make this my home and also make a better community. I thoroughly apologize if there has oh, ever been any issues relative to what these vacation rentals have been about in terms of detrimenting your peace and quiet in the neighborhood. I live at the Bella now um, and have told every one of my neighbors that if there is ever an issue, whatever time it is, I have implications for bad behavior noted on the rental agreements that if I even get a complaint, they must forfeit their deposit and I will give it to my neighbor. Because at the end of the day, we're all paying high property taxes. We deserve to be able to enjoy our homes and our properties, but there has to be a balance here, okay? I mean, there's, in my opinion, and what I've seen, and I'm trying to be as open as possible, bad landlords, lack of accountability, and what our neighbors helped us really learn about this whole process. There's a lot of people that may come into the city from out of town, let's say, and what they call absentee landlords, that may live in another state and don't really care about the community. Those are the things that I think if you're going to regulate, regulate in that manner. For those of us that are here trying to be a part of the community and try to make it better, I'll do everything I can. If there's an incident that happens, I promise you, I'll have to go out in the middle Excuse of the me. night to arrest myself. Sir. So, thank you. Hey, thank you. Is there anybody else in that room? All right, we'll go next row back. Anybody? I think we got three of the four in that row. How about the fourth? No. Just joking. All right, have the next next row back. All righty, go ahead. Hi, my name's Andrea Patinga. I live at 121 North Laclede Place. Well, we all have to rent. I have a duplex and I'm, I rent out, but I rent out yearly. I have no problem with people renting out by the month, by the week. But I do have a problem when they have five and ten cars and no one has a parking permit. We all have to pay for parking permits. And I watched the nice little van go by all weekend long. Never stopped, never tagged anybody, never even looked. Just went right on by. I had three of my neighbors call to me and complain about the same things. The trash. The people drinking on the street, throwing it at the bay, just so you know, I call you all the time about the trash. It's not fair that these commercial properties, and that's what they are now, commercial properties, they're not residential. My tenant lives there year round. He does not come and go. And that's a big issue because in this town of Atlantic City, we need voters. We don't have voters here. Having all these Airbnbs does not put you on the list to vote. They cannot vote, and we do need voters in this town. The other thing is there's also a problem with, um, wait, I forgot. <laughs> I'll stop with that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else in that row? All right, next row back. I think, I think I we're, oh, yes, go ahead. I wanted to wait until everybody was finished. Well, I what's lived, your name? Diane Silberti. I'm a realtor, and okay. I also live down here. I just bought a property two years ago, and I'm a new resident. So I listen to everything everybody says, and I was a landlord when I lived in Philly, and I had a lot of properties, and there's a lot of people I physically threw out of my properties because of the disturbance, my neighbors. I don't own any more 
rentals because they're a pain. <laughs> and just what I hear, the pros and cons, I'm not, not in favor of the owner making money or the, the landlord. What I'm opposed to is the noise and my quality of life that I'm retired have to come down here and stay here and listen to one o'clock in the morning, oh, let's have a barbecue in the backyard. Let's have some more drinks and wake up my granddaughter that's six years old and my granddaughter says to me, Nona, what's going on in the backyard? Why, are, why is all this noise happening until four o'clock in the morning? Well, I didn't know who to call, so I asked my neighbor. So my neighbor gave me the phone number of dispatch. Well, that worked out well. By the time they got there, everybody ran back in the house. And they kept on drinking and kept on coming back out. So finally, I got my ass up and I turned around and I saw the owner. So I took my daughter, my, my neighbor, and my granddaughter and we walked around and we had a nice chat with them and we straightened out the problem because obviously nobody listens here. I could see that things have been going on and festering for years. Is that why the economy's so bad, other than Chris Christie screwing it up? <laughs> I mean, really, this is pathetic. I mean, I come from Philly and I moved down here to retire. My quality of life is interrupted at one o'clock in the morning till 4.30. And then we have these people on Ventnor Avenue that play this music that is hideous that like we said, we got to do their job and we have to bother the police. The police are busy doing something, catching a criminal or whatever, who's ever mugging somebody in Atlantic City or picking up a hooker trying to get them off the street. I don't feel that I need to be obligated to do anybody's job or I don't get paid for it. I've done my service to what I used to do and I worked for the city. So I don't think that the citizens need to do that with the outrageous taxes that you charge, no matter what. Like I said, I'm in favor of anybody making money, but what I'm not in favor of is the government not enforcing what can be enforced, like the taxes. If they're making plenty of money off the rentals, let them get their own security. If they're making plenty of money off the rentals, God bless them, then they should address their own properties. Nobody's saying not to. Bring it in, bring the customers, bring the rentals, bring the revenue, but they should have to pay their fair share of what they're making off of it. Because obviously, Atlantic City's gone broke for not collecting the dues that are due them. Thank you, thank you very much. Whether or not um, citizens are going to call in things, um, you know, I, I continue, uh, despite both of the comments, I continue to put that out there as a real thing that I'm, I'm encouraging because um, you know, regardless of how well the uh, government's going to enforce things, there's always a role for an active citizenry. It doesn't matter where you live, uh, they have different issues, whether it's a rural community or a, su a suburban, um, and when it comes to here, it's, you know, we're going to continue to choose to live here and to solve these problems, and we have to be engaged. And that involved, that does, unfortunately, when, when things come up, it involves making that call, it involves doing the, um, hopefully, as we get our website um, shaped up, and we're shaping up on the, the city side, it'll involve more ways that you can take photos of things and, and so report things that are in your neighborhood, so it'll be pretty good. Anybody else who has not spoken, would they like to get on the record? Okay. It is 7.45. We've been at this now for an hour and 45 minutes. I want to thank um, you all for participating. Um, and I guess uh, for my colleagues, um, does anybody have any final thoughts they'd like to share before we adjourn uh, formally? just want to thank you for coming out. It was very informative. Uh, we'll have our discussion <coughs> and see where we can hopefully tweak this thing and make it better for us. So we intend to move forward with some changes. Excuse us. Thank you, Director. I just said thanks for coming out. It was very informative. I think we've learned some information. Uh, we have some things that we can do, I think, to uh, affect some change uh, without a whole lot of fanfare from what you said. Uh, we're going to put together a hotline and have some accountability that way. But we're, we're here to make it, make the improvements and to make it a better city. That's what we're all here for.
Yeah, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, people. I, everybody has a lot of really good things that they've been offering, and I, I hate to do it, but we, we do have to be timely out of respect to people. We'll stick around and talk afterwards, uh, but we're just going to limit it to the three-minute comment uh, from people who have already spoken. Councilman. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to echo uh, what the director said. Uh, thank everyone for coming out and the input, and uh, thank you, Councilman Kirsch, for putting this meeting together. And I would also encourage people, if you have written comments, please uh, give them to the clerk. Uh, please don't lose hope. We are very serious uh, about this issue, addressing this issue. Uh, we hear your concerns. We feel your concerns. We live in the land city. We're not just elected officials. We are officials, although we are elected officials, obviously. But we are residents, and we are concerned about how we can address these problems. I think the lady had a good idea. I know people are tired of, uh, of committees, but if people who are concerned can get together in an ongoing group with uh, the Councilman Kirch, I think we can uh, affect some changes and not solve all the problems, but I think we can make it better. And the only thing I'll add, because I've been talking a bunch, is there's three sheets of uh, legal paper over there. If anybody voluntarily wants to leave their email address, if you don't get emails from me, I, I try to keep a Twitter account, Facebook, and do email notifications. You're on Twitter, so I'm not going to send you out. But uh, if you want to voluntarily leave your name and email, and I'll make sure I add you to the list. And we are formally adjourned. Thank you very much.